Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Crossplay Podcast. My name is Nikki James, sitting here alongside my podcasting partner, Zachary. Hello. And today we got special guest, Jose. Peps is in the house. Orale. Guys, what have you been up to this week? What have you been playing? Let's start with Peps. What have you been playing, Peps? I've been playing a lot of Destiny 2 lately, mostly the raid. Uh, I still have yet to beat it, but you know it's 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 kind of common since it's, uh, the uh, raid is fresh. What is the raid? The raid is an end game piece of content for you to do with uh, five other people. Uh, it's just it's just really super hard, but the, you know it's really worth it to do just to get all the fucking cool gear. When I hear raid, I think like uh, Diablo three type stuff. Is that sort of what it's wow. like, or is it way off? It's kind of way off to be honest it's like a four stage depending on which raid you're doing but since this is a new one it's, there's only four parts to it yeah. um, but there I mean if you these types of shit will usually take about on a good team two hours or more yeah, yeah I hear these raids take hours what, what's the purpose of the raid do you have to go find a final boss do you have to go find some sort of loot it's just is a it, loot fest right it's, it's a loot fest but yeah you fight a bunch of bosses with miniature bosses to meet the end boss uh I guess in the case of Destiny Two, you fight uh, Emperor Callus, which is the who is he? Guy. Is he a humanoid or alien? He's an alien. He's is, like he, em- is he sensitive at all? I don't know. Is he or is he calloused? <laughs> yes, wordplay. This is why you <laughs> yeah. come to this podcast. <laughs> but what else? Just Destiny Two. Um, yeah, just mostly that. To be honest, what about you, Mister Zach? Uh, I've been playing some Rainbow Six Siege a lot. When I think raids, I think of that game. But a different type of raid. You're Hell trying to get the hostage. Yeah. But Hell it's been a yeah. feeding frenzy. Every time there's updates, it's just noob city. I learned a uh, cool new tactic in that game that I, that I, someone who's put hundreds of hours, haven't even thought about yet. Is you know how like there's floor breaches, like wooden floors that you can bust open the square? You know, the square yes, wooden yes. ceiling breach? What you can do is you can get a frag grenade. If you think the uh, defenders are down there, get a frag grenade, roll it on over that hole. And while it's cooking shoot out the hole with the shotgun, the grenade will fall down to the bottom and explode. Does Dude, that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, but that's so fucking advanced. I would never be able yeah, to time just, that. You, you roll it. I shoot, would shoot, shoot the shoot. grenade. I, <laughs> just knowing me, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, so, yeah, what else? Rainbow Six? Anything Rainbow else? Six, uh, Binding of Isaac still, um, UFC 2, any game that I can go on. And just the standards, huh? The, the ones, standards. The, the ones that keep you coming back. Yep. Um, and my crosswords. And my cro- <laughs> don't forget my crosswords <laughs> and my sudokus. I've been um playing what else, what the hell have I been playing? I just mostly Rainbow Six. Uh, I finally got unbanned. If you remember from last week's podcast, I was banned because <laughs> uh, some guy was just uh, threatening me of uh, visually. I did an I optical. Visually threatening, he was looking at you. <laughs> he looked and I did an optical pat down and deemed him a threat. <laughs> So I had to neutralize him. So well, who were you trained by? The LAPD. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, was he Castle? <laughs> <laughs> was it Castle? <laughs> nice. Oh, oh, um, it was actually Pulse. Uh, that Kraut. No, he's no, he's not. He's not Dre. Wait, he's, he's FBI. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. SWAT. Um, so he oh, is LA. So oh. I, I killed an LA an LA man. What do you call him? Los Angelinos. 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 I killed an Angelino. He had it coming. Um, <laughs> we, uh, Peps and I have been uh, throwing down some Let's Plays lately. We played some Sonic the other day. Uh, watched Peps struggle through one level for three episodes. Um, <laughs> I actually beat one of the bonus levels. So watch out for those episodes Ooh. coming out uh, the first couple weeks of October. What level did he struggle with, though? I'm just curious. Having Flying Battery game. Zone. Yeah, I, I can't better, blame I you. Too. Yeah, exactly. Hey, but but in this, his to his credit, he beat the boss on his first try. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the one you got to oh, swing oh, into dude, a lot. Yeah, that's he did a it. hard ass fucking boss. He Me and Nick it. did that with five lives, and we lost five fucking times yeah, in a row. Yeah, we had to go through one or more uh, game over tries to go through again to to try to beat him. We did not beat it the first try. Uh, we played. Uh, what, what else did we play? What did we play yesterday? We, we played also some. Did some WWE. That's right. We oh, did WWE. Yeah. We've been doing some slobber knockers in that. There's going to be those are also coming out in uh, early October. So look out for those. We created a new tag team entrance for the Miz Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. That's a uh, pretty hype. It's pretty choreographed. We should put that video up. 
It's going to go up. It's definitely okay. going to go up. <laughs> All right. uh, Brand new entrance by the Miztourage. Yeah, we, uh, I, I've been editing some of our Life is Strange Before the Storm videos. Uh, those are going up uh, just actually this week. So look out for those. They're actually really funny. Me and Jose had a lot of uh, fun playing those games. <laughs> With those, the Let's Plays are always the best when you're just having a really good time. You know what I mean? Right. And everyone's having fun. So, guys, if you like what you're hearing, you can follow us over on Twitter at Crossplay. Pod. You can also read the blog over at wordpress.com slash crossplay entertainment. You could also support us over on Patreon if you'd like over at patreon.com slash crossplay entertainment. Let's get into a little bit of news, guys. Uh, Ric Flair has admitted to alcoholism and has vowed to never drink again. Uh, if you guys remember last month, there was a bit of a health scare with Ric Flair. He was uh, put in a medically induced coma and after organ failure so it was a really rough month for him but he recently in a interview with i think variety he uh admitted to uh, his severe alcoholism he vowed never to drink again he was saying he couldn't even believe that he survived the surgery uh the the doctors called charlotte flair and told her to come to the hospital because your dad was going to die and so she flew from her tour of, in china over to North Carolina to be with her dad, but he ended up pulling out because he's fucking Ric Flair, dude. What did they give any details on the organ failure? I wonder if it had something to do with his drinking, like his liver, or kidneys. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually trying to pull that up here. Um, computer's not really agreeing with me right now, <laughs> but you know, just like classic Ric Flair, he kicks out at two. Uh, <laughs> you know, no, no coma is gonna hold him down. He's on the mend. Uh, he may return for WWE Starcade, which is this November. Uh, Starcade was a old pay per view put on by NWA back when Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Ric Flair, Harley Race, all these people ruled uh, NWA. And when NWA turned into WCW, WCW ran the Starcade uh, pay per view. It was like their WrestleMania until 2000. So Starcade hasn't been seen in, in, uh, since then. Cool classic pay per view. And they're bringing it back this November. And it's in North Carolina. Oh, cool! Ricky so the he's Dragon got to make an appearance. Yeah, a lot. Of, everyone's saying he's going to sure. make an appearance because it's his pay. You think Starcade? You think Ric Flair? Uh, Sting is going to be there also. Uh, yes. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat will be there, and it's also going to have uh, a whole list of matches. You know, Dolph Ziggler, Shinsuke, uh, Jinder, John Cena are all scheduled is to it appear. A, is it like a Raw pay per view or SmackDown, or is it both? Uh, what What is it, Jose? Do you remember? I don't remember. To be perfectly honest, it might be. A um it might be both brands to be honest. Yeah, it's either that I or like think so. a network special or Cena, something. Cena, Jinder, all them, they're all SmackDown, right? Uh yeah. Yeah, but it might be like a mixed pay-per-view or okay. like a network special. I don't know. I'm not sure. They're still kind of hashing out the details. But uh let me give you a little bit of the story over from CBS Sports from Brian Campbell. While Ric Flair has made a miraculous recovery after being rushed to the hospital in August with multiple organ failure. The two-time WWE Hall of Famer insists he's not out of the woods yet. The 68-year-old who admitted the recent ordeal scared the shit out of me <laughs> also has come clean about the reason for his health issues. Decades of alcohol abuse have finally caught up with him. In a sit-down interview with People, not Variety, this week, Flair announced he will dedicate the remainder of his life to getting healthy. Quote, I'll never drink again, Flair said. I never want to go through this again. So the story, you know, goes on um, to, to talk about how I said Charlotte was, you know, brought in because they were telling her Rick was going to die and all this. But he's he's fought back. Ric Flair has said one of the most influential people in his recovery has been none other than Hulk Hogan. Nice. Hulk Hogan has been at Ric Flair's side since the day he was put in the hospital. Um, so that's pretty awesome to see. I love me some Hulk Hogan um, going on down the list here. WWE has recently found themselves in some hot water uh, for a promo this past week on SmackDown that uh, Jinder Mahal ran on Shinsuke Nakamura, where it was uh, it was pretty he heavily uh, laden with racist <laughs> remarks, <laughs> which is funny because the, the pillar of Jinder's beef with people is that they think everyone's racist against him. Um, you know, so it's kind of weird that he's coming out now and being directly racist against shinsuke he was doing things like saying you always rook the same <laughs> uh they call you mr miyagi 
the Karate Kid as the Singh brothers, his two lackeys who accompanied him in the, accompanied him in the ring, laughed hysterically and, and mimed martial arts poses and slanty-eyed faces and stuff like that. The audience didn't quite know how to respond to Mahal, whose real name is Yuvraj Singh Desi and whose material is scripted. If this was an attempt to paint the champion as a hypocrite following the months of him courting booze by accusing American American audiences of xenophobia and jingoism, which he also did on Tuesday, it didn't seem to land. The crowd was quickly chanting, that's too far. And then they go on to quote people that were there at the event. Um, what do you guys think of this? Is that uh, poo-poo on WWE for writing that promo? What? Where do you stand, uh, Jose? Let's start with you. Um, poop on them. I think that might be the end of career of uh, Ginger's title reign, to be honest, if they're going to give him that much heat. I mean, I kind of felt like WWE always has been um, not mean, but if they're done with their wrestlers, they just kind of give them the like, golden boot. But they do it on like, uh, how how we say they would embarrass them, right? Yeah, like dude. They did it with Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin, That's Titus O'Neil. They they've done it to so many people in recent years, and they're mad at you. To Enzo, if they're mad at you, you're effed. I so I wonder if him coming out saying people are racist and stuff like that because i doubt that was scripted by the wwe so maybe they actually were like all right you want to you want to play those games you want to play the race games we'll give you this shit fucking script that's going to make everyone hate you including the washington post (laughs) yeah because the promo was so bad it had the Singh brother standing next to him in the ring and it was almost as if it was intended to be bad and make the audience cringe Um, And if that was the case, then yeah, mission accomplished. I remember watching it and I honestly, I thought it was funny. (laughs) I didn't think it was, (laughs) I didn't think it was racist or anything at all. What people fail to realize is that this is a scripted television drama. It is not, uh, we're not trying to teach your kids how to live. Like if you don't, if you got a problem with this, don't show your kids a TV program where people are hitting each other around and that's how they solve their differences. You know what I mean? Uh, So people, to to me, the, the PC crowd, the political correctness crowd, they need to, Get the fuck over it. It's not a big deal. It's a scripted drama. We're seeing so much worse on television. And you're worried about this depiction of racism. And and why is it that wrestling is fake unless it serves the drama factory? Like now all of a sudden wrestling is real. And this was a real event that happened at a sporting event. And now this chick, what was her name? Melissa Payne is all up in arms about it. Writing these articles uh, accusing WWE of uh, institutionalized racism. What do you guys think? Well, this is the first time that WWE has been so blatant about it. I mean, they're all they've always been somewhat racist, at least in my yeah, opinion. I yeah. mean, it's it, you can't Let's deny be honest, it. There's institutionalized racism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the fact that they were so upfront about it, I just, the thing that really irks me about it is that you know, they do this with a Japanese guy, they do this with an Asian which for whatever reason, of all the racist jokes, of all the stereotypes that everyone has in this country, people always seem to think that it's okay for people to be racist against Asians and not racist against blacks or, uh, you know, uh, Mexicans or or even be sexist against women. I mean, for whatever reason, these a- think, Asians have like a free pass. For I think you it's to be just the, the st- I mean, not to say there weren't Asian slaves railroad, but uh, the, you know, but I think the stigma isn't as bad on them as it is on blacks in our country. I mean, you know how the, the racial tension is between whites and blacks. I think that's why you see that. Um, but yeah, you are completely correct. It is, for some reason, totally okay to talk about Asian stereotypes in public and not get that weird like feeling of like, oh shit, like I'm yeah. in trouble. <laughs> oh no, everyone's going to hate but me But if now. you say the same yeah. thing about a black guy, like it's, it's really, really weird and has a dark cloud over it. But WWE has done that before. They did it in 1997, when DX dressed up as the Nation of Domination, and they had oh, X Pac in a big fat that. suit, yeah. as a, like a wrestling leotard, a singlet, and it was all padded out to be fat. And X Pac was in it, and he was blackface, and he was dressed up as uh, what was it? Uh, Mark Henry? Miz, no, it was Mizark. Mizark Henry, because uh, he's Henry. black. <laughs> so Miz, and he would come to the ring doing blackface and doing the shit you would like see in actual blackface. Oh, and complete blackface. Yeah. Wow, yeah how the fuck did they get away with yeah, that? Look up that gif, Jose, uh, and show it to Zach. It's pretty pretty interesting. Just look up <laughs> look up X Pac Mizark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they yeah they've definitely done it before. Uh, it's not you know 
something foreign to that company. But do you think that they should be, you know, having a finger wagged at them for this? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, I think, um, and I'm not a a PC type of guy. I'm not PC in the least bit, but I think, yeah, if, if they're going to get their finger wagged at for making racist jokes about black people, then it's unfair to let them get away with this about Asian people. You know, I think yeah, I just think a, it's wrong. So you're saying there's a double standard, right? There's there. a total double standard. That's what really bugs me is a double standard. I think we should be able to joke about race and things like that, but if but we're you gotta call a double standard when yeah, you see it. Exactly. It's not oh, Mark this a, is another but, one. Uh, I didn't All right. Wait, there's a different that. example of From Xbox and blackface. Yeah, it's a uh, no, of of gold dust. It. Oh, gold know, dust. Yeah, Wait, totally gold dust, he's always been down with the brothers. Whatever reason, I don't. Whoa, that. dude! Did you find the Xbox one? No, I did. That's, but uh, it was it was one. Of oh, the, the Xbox one yeah. is bad. Yeah. What the fuck? Here. That's bad, isn't it? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm is. Are you gonna put that, that yeah, in there? Okay, that because there. that is so. He looks like such a fucking dork too. <laughs> He's like, eh. I know. In WWE, you know, they were fully behind that. They wrote that. <laughs> What is Rowdy Roddy Piper doing in that half black? I don't know, actually. I don't remember why he was doing oh, that. Oh, yeah. It was when I think he was tag teaming with Mr. T. Did Mr. Something. T paint his really? uh, half of himself <laughs> white? No, you don't fucking know he didn't. <laughs> Could you imagine funny. asking him to do that? Yeah. Uh, so moving on down. <laughs> money was right. Moving on down <laughs> the list here of topics. Uh, there has been a mass exodus of subscribers from what culture wrestling after the departure of their four main uh on screen personalities Adam Blompier, Adam Pacitti, Jack King and s- the other guy whose name I don't remember off the top of my head have all left what culture wrestling the YouTube channel to presumably maybe start their own thing uh, they're definitely famous faces on YouTube now. They're one, some of the biggest in the world of wrestling. So maybe they don't need what culture as their umbrella anymore, you know, telling them what to do. So this Tuesday, uh, whatculture.com released this statement. It is with sadness that we must today announce that Adam Blompier, says it right here, Adam Pacitti, Ross Tweedell, Sam Driver, and Jack King will be leaving what culture in the coming weeks to pursue other projects. We'd like to thank them for their work over the past two years and wish them all the best in their future endeavors. Ooh, they got it future endeavored hard. Yikes. While we understand this news will disappoint a section of our audience, we'll be using this opportunity to, to diversify and expand the product as a whole. We'll be introducing brand new shows, brand new personalities, and freshening up existing elements of all of our channels. We look forward to sharing more announcements on this in the coming weeks. So... That's not even really the news here. The news is the subscriber base basically crumbling after this happens. So if you go look on uh, What Culture Wrestling Social Blade account, which is like a YouTube tracker, tracks your subscribers and everything. Yeah. Two days before uh, this news dropped, they gained 656 subscribers. The next day, they gained 560 subscribers in a day. The day they announced the departures of the core group, they lost 7,100 subscribers. Wow. The next day, they lost 4,300 subscribers. Oh, my God. The next day, they lost 1,200. The next day, 2,500, 800, 200, 3,100. That's where we're at now. So yikes! it's been a huge uh, just departure uh, since since then. Uh I I really think that that was the smart thing to do. These guys kind of got bigger than the company they were overseen by. Their names got big. They started their own wrestling company, WCPW, yeah. that went from, I remember laughing at WCPW at first, to then going from that to like, holy shit, they're booking Kurt Angle, Cody Rhodes. Um, who else? There's any, oh, any Bubba Ray one. Dudley. Yeah, yeah, Bubba Ray Dudley, uh, Alberto, Del, Del, Alberto Del Rio. Yeah, he was yeah, and just all kinds of people. Uh, and it turned into a real, um, a real deal wrestling company that that got on Vince's radar. I'm sure. Oh yeah. If all of his people were going over there, um, so interesting to see. Uh, I want I you know, I wish them the best. I think they're going to succeed no matter what they do. They have a really 
um, strong fan base. I'm one of them. I, I enjoy their videos. So what what did what culture first come out as? Was it strictly for wrestling? No, uh, it was just a pop culture channel. As far as I know, they got popular off their top ten videos. That's what I list, know them list for. videos. Yeah. Uh, and I think they broke into like what culture wrestling to do top top ten wrestling videos, and that just blew up to be way more popular than what culture. So wow. so it shows how how big of a wrestling audience they had. If they had like over ten thousand people within the first two days leave, those yeah. those were all wrestling fans. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and those are just the ones that didn't leave. You know what I mean? Or that left. I, yeah. What about the ones that didn't leave? Right. Like myself, I didn't leave. Then so I'm sure there's a lot of those people that are yeah. that still haven't left. Um moving on down the list. Uh what do we got here? New Red Dead Redemption two trailer is dropping Thursday, the twenty eighth. Uh, did you guys know about this? Hear about this? See this? Hear about this? I heard about this this morning, literally. So yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, Rockstar released it via their official uh, Twitter account. Uh, are you guys interested in this game at all, Peps? Where are you at? Very much so. I Talk love, to me. I love the first one and as well as the DLC they released for it. Talk to me about it. Um, Brad said, it's a fucking just a great goddamn uh, Western. Did you beat the story? Yeah, I did. I did beat it. Um, tragic ending. I don't know if anyone's out there have, hasn't beaten it yet. Yeah, go ahead, and, sure. go ahead and explain the ending. Spoiler what you alert. Yeah, <laughs> spoiler alert. Well, after I <laughs> was a crossplay robot, folks. Um, <laughs> um, no, at the, at the end, you know, after you do all the tasks, to, I guess essentially uh, Uncle Sam has told you what to do. Uh, they, they, you know, cut their, they uh, tie up loose ends on their end, and fucking off. Um, I can't think of his name. John Marston. John Marston. In his own yeah, home. they get rid of him. They. He's uh, considered a loose end, so they kill him in the barn, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they trap him in a barn, and he busts out of the barn, and the whole FBI is in a firing squad on the outside, and they bust him, bust the cap in him. Yeah, the last scene, I think it's it's him doing the dead aim, and you're just moving. Oh, yeah. Doing all the deputies around as much as you can get before they they kill you, yeah. And then the saddest scene in video (laughs) games happens, and it shows, of course, it's got to be Johnny Cash. And the camera is panning across the ground, like about four feet high. And Johnny then Cash song playing in the background. Yeah, I believe. Oh, it's it's uh, "Bury Me Not on the Lone Prairie." Yeah. It's very uh, just the title. Yeah, <laughs> I'm already sad. I'm already getting goosebumps. <laughs> Damn you, Johnny! Uh, it's panning over this the, the ground, and then it shows his family's grave, the wife, uh, John, and yeah, and then it shows it pans out to show his kid standing over the graves. And then from that point on, in the like after part, after you beat the game, you are in the shoes of his son. So that was like one of the saddest endings ever in video games. Uh, you gonna... So, so where do they pick up the story from there? Then, I mean, I don't know. That's that's for part two. That's a lot of speculating. It might be a prequel. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I hope during, it is. Uh, That'd John, be cool. You're, you're during, John. Uh, yeah, yeah, John Marson during his uh, gang days. Yeah, when you're with your group of yeah. uh what's the name of the main guy you're after again? Um I, it's sleeping. Oh man. I don't remember either. Something Williamson. Bill Williamson. Bill Williamson. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice name. Yeah. yeah, Bill Williamson, your old uh crime partner. So I believe Red Dead Two is gonna take place during that time, which actually is gonna be rad from the sounds of it, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And we know he doesn't die at the end. So <clears throat> They so the, as far as I understand, the only trailer that's been out for Red Dead was the one that E3 that they showed, and it wasn't even a gameplay trailer. Yeah, they just hinted at certain more things. More like an in-engine footage, yeah, where it's yeah. just using the game engine, but not necessarily, you know. And the one coming out is going to be actual gameplay f- footage. I um, hope so. It just says new trailer, so you know, and the game's still pretty far away. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're still working just with in-engine footage and it'll probably be a more faithful representation of what the game's going to look like rather than that first one we saw. Yeah. That was just yeah. meant to wow you. Even if it's not, even if the graphics were the same as the first one, it would still be fine. I don't think the gameplay can get any worse or better. I think it's just going to be a good game. It's yeah. the story that I'm interested in. Yeah, they're going to really have to fuck up in order for that to be a bad game. So moving on down the list, over at Polygon.com, Christopher Grant writes, PUBG creators are unhappy with Fortnite Battle Royale considering 
quote, further action, meaning <laughs> a lawsuit or I don't know. They're just going to punk them. Earlier this week, <laughs> Epic Games announced that the PUBG-inspired Battle Royale variant of Fortnite, its long-in-development sandbox survival game, would be released for free on consoles and PC next week. For free. Free fitty. This nice. development isn't sitting well with the team at Blue Hole, the developers of Player Unknown Battlegrounds, who use Epic's Unreal Engine to power the early access mega hit. A press release issued by Blue Hole this morning suggests the team is contemplating further action. We quote, We've had an ongoing relationship with Epic Games through PUBG's development as they are creators of Unreal Engine 4, the engine we licensed for our game, Blue Hole's Chang Han Kim said in a press release. After listening to the growing feedback from our community and reviewing the gameplay ourselves, we are concerned that Fortnite may be replicating the experience for which PUBG is known. Um, the article goes on, but we'll stop it there. What do you... Is what's just, what's your hot take on that? Is it just off the engine? Because if they're doing that, why don't, why don't, don't they go after uh, GTA? It was not the well. engine. I think their beef is that they're using their gameplay. Do you know how PUBG works? This, this yeah, style? yeah, I know how that works. But so I mean, for those that don't know, Player Unknown's Battleground is a a battle royale type of game mode where you have a hundred players in a huge map, drops them in via airdrop, and then the map will slowly, ever so slowly, start to close in, and it's every man for himself. It's a, a little bit like DayZ in the way that it's a loot fest, hiking simulator. Um, it looks like insane fun. Um, but now we have Fortnite copying that. So what's your hot take on that, Peps? Well, is that ethically sketchy? Is it illegal? Like, where? what do you think about it? Is well, it I mean, I, I can move? see why they would want to be concerned because there's still a early access game right correct uh so you know and i don't know the developer who developed it it's like an indie uh who developed what pubg uh, yeah pubg blue hole so i've never heard so, of yeah, so yeah so i would think that's why they would want to do it just to keep themselves afloat so they don't lose sales um what about you zach well i mean i think this this whole maybe we're considering further action and stuff I think that's really just to get a big publicity story, get their name out there because let's I mean the, that would be like Battlefield 1 suing Call of Duty because they came out with Call of Duty w- World War 2. Yeah, but I think it's the gameplay style, you know what I mean? That 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 it, it, there's the a gameplay the game style unfolds, the way that's 100 every man for himself, the map gets smaller, last man standing. I think that's kind of the kind of the pains of innovation. This is an innovative game style that no one's done yet. So yeah. now, naturally, people are going to rip off of it, right? Yeah. yeah that's yeah, not yeah. illegal. That's not... Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare did domination, where you have the three flags and you know, and the teams holding the flags get points for each flag they hold. First team to 200 points wins. Yeah. And then in Battlefield 4, we saw domination. And now Battlefield 1, they have domination. They call it something else now, but it's the same pr- uh, premise. Three flags, you get points for each flag you hold. Conquest. Not Conquest. No, it's not Conquest. Oh. It's a little different. They um, do have domination. I think it's called domination, actually. Yeah, it might even just yeah. be called domination. Uh, so I don't think uh, Blue Hole really has a leg to stand on here. Like, not, of course, not at all. I, I think that's only just, I mean, publicity is all they have to gain here. But, I mean, another good example of recent is f- uh, Friday the 13th. That game came out. And then what's the new one that just came out? Oh, Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight. Yeah, I'm not sure which of those was out first. Um I actually don't know, but either way, one of them is ripping off the other, but one of them is an innovative new gameplay style, right? Yeah. So that's just the pains of, I mean, you should be flattered, you know, that people are copying. It means you're doing something innovative and right, and you're always going to be the original. Don't even acknowledge this. By acknowledging it, you're acknowledging that you're threatened. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just let it happen. Let it roll off your shoulders. Are you going to be playing Fortnite, Peps? Free. Free? I'll give it a shot, but uh, so far what I've seen, I haven't really liked but, you know, again, I just got to give it the old college try. Have you seen much of it? Like a trailer? I've or... seen bits and pieces of it. I mean, it looks pretty cool with the Horde style mode. Yeah, right. Um, what, what did you think of the trailer, Zach? You watched um, it. Uh, it looks it looks good. I actually like I like uh, PUBG more. I think that's going to be... I think that's a better game. But um, the new one looks a little more cartoony. It's less... It, 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 it just has a different vibe. It's more like a, an Overwatch type of vibe compared to... Uh, a Rainbow Six vibe. Um, 
if that makes any sense. No, it totally, totally makes sense. Uh, Fortnite seems a bit more cartoony in its presentation and its art style, yeah. which could be cool. You know, it's totally cool. But I think I'd prefer the, the simulation looking game, the one that looks realistic Same uh, in, 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 when I'm dealing with that type of gameplay. It seems like it up the uh, excitement factor more than the other. The donkey video that he has of that is hilarious. Oh, that's right. And yeah. so watching that makes me want to play it just because it looks so funny. <laughs> Check Stop. out video game. Give me donkey. a pants. Oh yeah, check <laughs> check out video game donkey on YouTube. He has a hilarious uh, player unknowns battlegrounds video, and he has a hilarious lot of other videos. Just a good channel to binge on. As soon as you're done binging on crossplay, go binge on donkey. But you have to binge on crossplay first. Those all, are the rules. All of our videos, even the ones where the audio sucks. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Let me take you guys on a little journey for this week's Forgotten Game of the Week. This week, we're talking about Gladius. came out in 2003, uh, developed by LucasArts for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. Uh, did you guys, either of you play that game in your day? No. It doesn't even ring a bell. Not at all. So, uh, what this game is about is you own a gladiator school. And it's got a bit of a Pokemon vibe to it in that you collect gladiators and have them in your school and you upgrade every piece of them. You upgrade their armor, you upgrade their, their you know, their sword and you upgrade their uh, abilities like their attack speed, their movement speed, things like that. And once these soldiers die, or these gladiators die, they're dead. They're gone forever. Oh. So you tend to um, invest emotionally into them because you name them. Out, out of, they give you a list of really cool... Um, names that would fit the time period and you could name them and just work on them and it's really testicles cool. testicles <laughs> what other we got any other gems <laughs> no just that one put you on the yeah. spot <laughs> you got any more wise guy <laughs> no so like you uh you create uh you know these these gladiators from the ground up and you go to these other gladi gladiatorial gladia how how does how does gladiator that? schools gladiator schools you go to these other gladiator <laughs> schools and you gladiate Oh, you gladiate all right. You gladiate <laughs> all over them. And you fight. Do you gladiate other... inside of them too? You gladiate all over their chest piece. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a different course here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and so there's over there's over five hundred different encounters in the game. They all kind of work like open arena Pokemon battles, like in a in a Coliseum, where it's your five soldiers against their five soldiers. And they you can mix it up with all kinds of ranged attacks, close attacks. You can, can unlock minotaurs and things like that. Um, it's uh, kind of movement-based like uh, Advance Wars is, where your guy has four movement. He can move four blocks to try to flank the opponent and attack him. Um, for what well, was 2003, I was uh, like 15 or something, I think. And it was really unlike me to be into a game like that, but I was really into the like the Roman setting, you know what I mean? Um and there was two stories for the game, two completely separate, uh, about 10 hour long stories where you could play the male Valens or the uh, female, his sister, Ursula. And it told two very different stories. So it was really cool through, through these battles. Um, yeah, you, you could still find it on uh, emulators. I'm sure the game is dirt cheap on online on Amazon. Uh, does this sound like a game that either of you would play? I, I love, love turn-based combat, so I'm 100% interested in this game. I'm going to look up an emulator for it as soon as we're done with this podcast. Yeah, we might have to do a Let's Play of this, figure this out. Oh, yeah. We could definitely do it on your computer. Yeah, we can figure um, that out. We should do that for sure. But, um, but yeah. I'm, and you're I'm, a history buff, too, right? I'm a history buff, and, more, and just like you, I really love ancient settings. So being in a yeah. Roman setting or a Greek setting or... A certain time era just triggers your imagination, just kind of makes you imagine yourself being in that era. So, yeah, I'm totally into that. So, right. we, we, we got to try this. A let's play, listen up, cross players. Let's play for Gladius coming out soon. Let us know. If, don't let us forget. Get us on Twitter at CrossplayPod. Hold us accountable. Hold us accountable. <laughs> like, I need just in life, I need someone to hold me accountable. So, if you guys are life coaches, certified life coaches. <laughs> Tony Robbins, you out there? Please reach out to me. Please tell me how much I'm fucking up. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Peps, what about you? Would you play Gladius? Yeah, that type of gameplay, how it is, it runs, what you just basically explained was essentially um, Fire Emblem to me. Oh, yeah. Talk about Fire yeah. Emblem. That is one of the uh, franchises of my childhood that just went completely by me. Never played it. 
I know it's Marth and Roy. That's one of them. Yeah, there's multiple fucking fire flim, uh, fire flims, fire yeah, emblem fire games flim, out flim, there. Flims. Um, Ladies but, and folks, but no, flim that's flims. that's essentially what the early, yeah, the earlier ones were about. You know, you it wasn't like said in his medieval like fantasy land type shit. Uh, you could uh, you the cool thing about this, uh, you know, all the type of uh, warriors you talked about was essentially what Fire Emblem has too. So in Fire Emblem, do you build like a like a, a stable? It's not a well. You do, well you you go around as a party, like a caravan type of shit. I not see. essentially a school, but yeah. But in the earlier ones, you you know, as you progress to the levels, you pick up new uh, warriors, soldiers, whatever, thieves, archers, uh, wyvern riders. So uh, oh oh oh, uh, wyvern. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Dragon, like a really yeah. small dragon. A really small dragon, uh, but you're a soldier on top of it with a lance. Nice. So Always down to ride a yeah. dragon. Jousting on dragons. Jousting on dragons. Yeah. Nice. Well, back to Gladius. You know, it not only was you know the setting and everything really rad. It had awesome combat, and the music to boot was really just typical of the of the time period. And it was a really great game. So go ahead and check out Gladius if you're looking for a forgotten gem that you would like to check out. It's got the Nikki James seal of approval. Moving on down the list uh, to the topic of the show, gentlemen, should the price of games be increased to sixty dollars. Now, hear me out. Seventy. Okay, from sixty. <laughs> That's right. Not so. Not necessarily seventy is a hard price point. Just just anywhere really. Uh, should they come out? Because a lot of developers believe that games aren't worth sixty dollars anymore. So to kind of uh, combat that, they've introduced things like microtransaction economies for them to earn money on a game after it's come out. Uh. So is it time to raise the price of games? Because there was a time in the suit, even back in the Super Nintendo, some games were eighty, ninety dollars in that time's money. <laughs> like so, imagine how expensive it would be now. There was no right. standard for game prices until the GameCube period came out, and all games were I think fifty, and then around the Xbox three hundred and sixty, they were raised to sixty dollars. But then there was no bump this generation; they still are sixty dollars, even though development costs overhead is higher than ever before for these development companies. Uh, so should is it time to increase the price of games, Peps, PepsiCo, Big no, Bad Peps? Not at all. What not do you for me at least. I mean, I, I don't mind microtransactions. Uh, I just avoid them. If it, if it's pay to win that type of model, I wouldn't give a shit about that game. To be right. perfectly honest. So then we have where those two. You you say if it's pay to win, you're not down, but yeah. you're also down for microtransactions. And then in walks NBA 2K18. Where they start blurring that line. Um, recently, there's been a controversy involving the Sixth Axis.com, a pretty popular and well trusted PlayStation uh, review site, where one of their uh, reviewers reviewed NBA 2K18 as a three out of ten, uh, despite it being a pretty damn good game. They they cited uh, the egregious use of microtransactions. Um, what had what happened after that was 2K got in touch with the reviewer, and the site uh, score disappeared from Metacritic, disappeared from their website. And then people noticed the Streisand effect took place and way more people than that would have seen it originally now have seen it like you guys and me. And uh, now the score reappeared um, and 2K is running away with their tail between their legs. Now, the reason why the score was so bad was because of the microtransaction economy in that game. Now, if you want to unlock micro like Michael Jordan's dunk, you got to play over 200 games. Where if you go back to NBA 2K14, you could do that in eight games. But now they're, they're forcing you to buy this VC, their virtual currency, if you want to really get anywhere with your character other than your basic buzz cut <laughs> and layup. You know what I mean? And a lot of people, not me, but a lot of people play these games to death. Like I play WWE or Rainbow Six. Like they, they will spend that money if it's available. So is it fair? Like or... You know what I mean, and so that's that's why they got that really bad score. So, so what do you think of that, uh, Peps? Like, wh- where was the line drawn for you personally? Purposely making you play to unlock a lot of shit behind a paywall—that's pretty garbage. That's a pretty shitty practice. Right. Um, but isn't it okay up to a degree, right? Like, like for to Rainbow some degree, Six yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I guess that's where we where we got to draw. We got to figure out where that line is. You know what I mean? How much time? is necessary why do i have to play i forget the number something like 24 games to unlock 
uh, a nice haircut in the NBA, 2K18. So it's, it's where's that line at for you? Is it just case by case basis or case 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 by case? Yeah. For me, with a game like NBA, um, NBA Two K, I two hundred games to me sounds like nothing. That sounds like so fast. Yeah, I'd probably accomplish if I was into that game. You probably play maybe up to six to ten games a day if you're really into that game. Maybe even more. So yeah. that would probably take you four months. Yeah. So and I don't know. Is that too long? I. Well, because th- those games last me all season long, uh, mm-hmm. not just during the NBA season, all year, all year long till the new one comes out. And um, when I was playing the uh, last year's, I remember getting past all of all, getting through all the unlock things that I wanted to unlock um, for for my character to make them exactly what I wanted. I think I got to that point way too fast, and it made me stop playing the game. And so. Yeah. So if it takes longer to unlock the really, really cool stuff, if it puts a really high value on the stuff where you got to work at it to, to unlock it, then I think it's a good thing. So you're saying it's just a, a means of, whether intentional or not, it's a means of extending the playability of the game. It may, Yeah, I doubt that was their intentions. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. But, yeah. but it does, you know, For me, a side effect. It, it Yeah, it has that side effect. Um, if it If it's... Play if it's truly play to win though, where it's unlock abilities and unlock, unlock things like this with money. When you're playing online, it'll it'll ruin the online online gameplay for me. So yeah. um, kind of like the UFC two, not the um, not just the quick match, but the mode where where you have your team, the my team. Right. That is play to win. That one is you pay and you can unlock the coolest shit and or the the most devastating kicks the, the most moves, devastating yeah, punches right. um and the best cards you know power up abilities so that really ruined it for me because it was just i'm not gonna pay any money during a game i i don't i don't think there's any in-game transactions that i've done outside of dlc i don't i i'm not a fan of the microtransaction market and so you know for me i don't know i think this game is going to be uh i think it's going to be a good thing but it's I got to try it to see. I'm kind of of two minds on it because on one hand, I think it's really shitty of them to intentionally create a model where your $60 game has the economy of a fee to play game from Android, from the Android market. You know what I mean? And they're intentionally do it, doing it to, to exploit money out of the whales. You know, the, the, they, the whales are the people that are going to spend $200 on VC. You know, they'll, they'll alienate, all of us to get to those people um Mm -hmm. and that's i guess ethically shady but it's fucking it's business dude it's It's capitalism (laughs) yeah it's not even really it's yeah it's just capitalism it's shady as far as capitalism is shady as a whole yeah it's just they're trying to make as much money as possible while while keeping most people happy i'm not (laughs) no but uh, you know like no no i'm i'm effing with you uh, i'm effing your a um but let me so so let me ask you this though so you're saying back in the day nintendo games super nintendo games some of them if you account for inflation or uh, if you're using today's dollar they would have been eighty dollars plus certain games. No, some games were eighty dollars plus in nineteen ninety one dollars. Um, there was no standard. Oh, like you would go to the store and, pay and yeah, you would oh, pay. Shit. You paid. Um, I'll have to look it up, but I know there was many game, popular games, Street Fighter, Mario games that were intentionally super highly priced because there was no real standard. The developer to release, you know, decided yeah. the price, which is kind of the way it should be, to be honest. What, there is no reason The Witcher 3 should be $60. That is a $100 game that I would pay $100 for. Rainbow Six, to me, sh- is a solid $60 game. You know what I mean? But then you get games that are $60 like, uh, I don't know, let's think. Uh, what was a bomb? Anything bomb this year really hard? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember them. <laughs> yeah, but just take a game that bombs. That game should not have been oh, $60. Like Battleborn. Battleborn. Right. That's a forty dollar game, labeled sixty dollars. Now developers sometimes will do that. Ratchet and Clank was only a thirty dollar game. Uh, no Man's Sky, no, that was sixty. No Man's Sky, I think. But but anyways, the point being is that yeah, back then developers would set their own prices for games. Some of them were incredibly expensive. Yeah. So what what were you? What uh, well, what I was gonna ask is how many games 
how many games have you put that sort of money into with with all the DLC and and with um and even like in Rainbow Six like you, you, could, you... you could spend money for for uh, the little experience points. Renown. Yeah. Um, I mean, have you spent that kind of money on any game before? I mean, that seems like one of those things. Like, uh, video games now are probably priced the same way they were back then. Um, like, well, Rainbow Six is to me a different case because I don't buy Renown in Rainbow with my money. Um, unless I've gotten like a gift card from somebody. Yeah. But what I do buy is the season pass. But that's because I'm such a fan of Rainbow. I genuinely want to support them. I don't want to support the developer, so I will purchase their DLC, the the season passes. Um, but there's that, and then there's you know NBA 2K18 situation, uh, where it's clearly just to um, hold you back if you don't pay up more money after you buy the game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, where it's like if you if you don't have the persistence to unlock this, here's an easy way out. Yeah, and a lot of people are going to take that easy way because that's just how people are. You know, it's the way, yeah. we, way and we are. De- and depending how hard they make it. That's why I want the game to come out. I want to play it because I want to see how long it really is going to take for me to unlock uh, some of the cool shit in the game. Nice. So, Peps, uh, would increasing the price to save 70 bucks, uh, would that curb this trend at all? Why or why not? Do you think it'll make it better, the microtransaction situation? I don't think so, to be honest. Why is that? Um, I think one thing, um, by increasing it to $70, um, I, don't, I, I think that's just an extra $10 they would be making per game. I don't think... Ma- Increasing that would make any difference on microtransactions. People who spend full price on a game who also like to spend money on microtransactions are still going to do that. Um, I think if they're smart, they would wait to increase the price till the next gen of consoles come out. Just right. like when PS2, I remember PS2 games were 50 bucks. Right, yep. And then here comes PS3. And they're 60 now. Now they're 60. But it kind—it almost made sense. I was like, okay, the newer one, it's all this, Blu-ray and... Okay, I'll spend. <laughs> you know, here's here's a cool side question. What is a game that you would that in the past few years, is there a game that you would have spent a hundred dollars or more on based on the experience you've got in after release, where you could sit back and say, now knowing what I've known and what I've experienced in this game, I would have paid a hundred dollars for this game. Is there any game that that strikes that chord for you, Zach? Oh yeah. Uh, Skyrim off the bat. Oh yeah, Skyrim for sure. I would have paid a hundred dollars for it. That's that was so, so much hours of gameplay. Hell yeah, that's the easy. So immersive. That's an easy one. You don't know, but good one. Um, what about you, Peps? Anything off the top of your head? What? Uh, Overwatch. Even I know you love you yourself some Overwatch. <laughs> Easily, yeah, very much so. Um, but even then, Overwatch doesn't even have much DLC. Yeah, they yeah. they give pretty good post release support, yeah. right? How often? Yeah. When was the last time they came out? Oh, it was Doomfist came out in like Doomfist August, right, out, yeah, or no, some or July. Sometime in July, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was in July. It was right when we started podcasting. Um, but no, yeah, they got shit coming out for like every month. And it's all free, whether it be a new character or, or a new map. I know recently, actually, they just got a new map, uh, Junker Town, I believe. What is it, Junker Town? Junker Town. Junker Two. Junk. Some type of Junk Town. Huh. It's a. Is it a real city? A lot of their maps are real. Is it called Junkerton? I think it's... I really forgot the name of it. But I'm <laughs> pretty sure it's Junkers. Junkers? Junkers, <laughs> Junkers New, Junkers, New, look New it up. Jersey. Junkers. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, I have already stated a couple of The Witcher. Uh, I, would, I would pay fucking 150 bucks for Rainbow Six. Are you kidding me? I've got 300 and something hours out of it. What what other thing are you gonna get that much uh, enjoyment out of for that for sixty bucks? Like, that's that's crazy. So, yeah, those are definitely mine. Would you buy a Rainbow Six console? What do you mean? What's what's know. this they console like? Console what are the specs? Has, it, it it can run Rainbow Six on the highest settings. It's just all <laughs> obsessed with sixes. It's all it runs all at sixty yeah. frames per second. <laughs> the resolution s- is six hundred by 600. <laughs> six hundred by six hundred. Really shitty resolution. Sixty six gigs of RAM. <laughs> 
Only six, could have been 666. But. Six, six gigabyte hard drive. <laughs> so much RAM, but such a little hard drive. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> More RAM than hard drive I space. would buy the shit out of that console in a heartbeat. It costs $300, though. <laughs> what? But you have to buy two? <laughs> 600 <laughs> It uh, costs six hundred dollars. There actually. you go. We figured it out. We do math. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next topic is a hypothetical question. So, if you were given immortality, but given that with one stipulation, you had to go back in time three thousand years and live, start life from that point. But we're only in the year 2017, so you can't go back more years than that. Oh, because of zero. Because of zero. You can't go back to the time negative. Okay, so if you could ha- would have to go <laughs> back <laughs> 2007. Oh, no. Okay. No, no, but, but so. Y- 18 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so go on. So you go back uh, tw- uh, 3,000 years ago, about 1,000 BC, we'll say. Would you do it? Um, and if so, what would you do? Question goes to you, Nick. Oh, snaps. <laughs> right to me. Um, okay, well, I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, I almost started reading the last topic. Would that curb the microtransaction economy? <laughs> <laughs> if you had enough influence, yes. <laughs> oh, so what happens if I get a mortal wound in this scenario? Like, what if I'm, like, crushed by a truck? Uh, let's say what that's an impossibility. Okay, just will not even yeah. cross well, that situation. Immortal. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, am I going to feel immense pain if someone chops off my hand? I don't know. I might... uh, yes, you would. Okay. We'll say that. You still experience so you pain. pain. You still have to avoid death. You can't just be run yourself into a wall over and over again for 3,000 years. Okay, okay. I feel you. All right, so my knee-jerk reaction, like I think most people's would probably be, is like, fuck yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Immortality. Never gonna die, baby. Get to watch Lethal Weapon 23. And one day it's just gonna it's gonna be a good time. <laughs> but I stopped to think for a second and I'm like, uh, what do you do after the apocalypse? One day it's all gonna be a fucked through nuclear war or the one true lord spaghetti monster is gonna come down. And the sun blowing up. <laughs> sun blowing up, it's gonna end one day. Comet. Whether it's in three hundred years or three hundred million years, it's gonna end. And then then what? You're fucked. You're on a, a burnt out rock or you're floating through space. Can't yeah. breathe. That would be what if you can't depressing. breathe for eternity? All right, <laughs> yeah, you're just you feel that perpetually that, per- that fear. <laughs> just, oh no, I don't want to do that. So, like, I think about what? Do, what do you? What do you say, Peps? You're about to speak. Jesus Christ, what well, that kind of fucking thought? Um, but it's that's just <laughs> well, like, no, no, well, well, imagine well, drowning. Well, for exactly. Ever. That's what I mean. What if? Yeah. So I think immortal about that. drowning. And then I kind of get a little Good philosoph- band name. <laughs> death metal band I, I get a little philosophical and i start to be like well isn't like dying well human like isn't to live and to die to be human that like, is it, so it's i don't know i don't i don't think i could do it i think eventually i'd go crazy i'd go s- nuts and worst part i'd be nuts for eternity yes and it's only gonna get worse so i don't think so i don't i think it's a romantic thought but i don't think i'd do it if i thought about it really hard it'd be like a 30 your life would feel like a 36 hour tropico binge oh you can't hit the home <laughs> button and get out. get out there's no oh, way I'm out getting so antsy thinking about it because oh, tropico dude. did that to me <laughs> <laughs> you know i had to get personal just because but Jeez, all right so no. let's add so, that, so i say no i'm uh, i pass it to you to the, to the group all right well let me add another stipulation here you die when humanity dies. Okay. So when all humans are extinct, then you that can That changes die. things. Then yes, I would probably do it. Okay. What would you do? Um, I would probably spend, from right from the get-go, I would uh, spend my time just traveling the world. That's it. Yeah. And I'm sure that would occupy me for a few hundred years. If I wanted to see everything and anything, go to the craziest depths in the planet and just explore the world that I'm on. You know what I mean? And then I'd probably, I'd want to learn. 
everything and I got the world, I got all the time in the world to do it. You know what I mean? I'd want to learn as much as I could about every science, every, just everything. You know what I mean? Um, that would probably keep me occupied for thousands of years. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I would, I would fuck so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I would be little Johnny Appleseed, dude. <laughs> Spreading it everywhere I go. There's going to be a bunch of little fat ginger beards all over the planet by the year 3012. Oh, man. So that, that's probably what my, what my mind goes to when I think of what I would do in the uh, my immortality. I'd start a lot You'd of go fights. go full on Genghis Khan. I'd also oh, start a lot of fights. Oh, now you going even more Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to go spread I, my seed. I'm going to tear fights. down that wall that they built. I'd hate it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that's what I say. You're a lot like uh, Guardians too, then. What do they do in Guardians 2? His dad. Um, Kurt Russell? Yeah. That's what he does. Or oh, yeah, that's around. right. That's, that was basically, yeah, the main premise of the story of the... Every every time the, we watch that movie, I'm shit-faced. Ego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Peps, I guess, what do you what do you say? I would do it. I would get eaten a lot, I know, in the very beginning. Eaten? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, bigger packing, creatures, huh? Yeah, bigger yeah. creatures, other... Natural hur- like uh, disasters like hurricanes, tornadoes. I would probably want to go through them. Yeah, <laughs> just right. Just run like. right into a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would you do though? Like, say you you wake up three thousand years. It's just like a flash. And then what do you what do you do? What do you spend your time doing? I would probably go down that same run, going trying out every occupation. Nice. Just, I, I just like just work everywhere. Work everywhere. Would you be a whipping boy? That's an occupation. <laughs> Would you be a gimp? You know what that is? Would you, I, what, not, what is a gimp? I don't know who we should talk about it on the okay. podcast. <laughs> right. Would you would you be a castrato? Ooh, that no. sounds cool. <laughs> I want to keep, I want sounds, ooh, that sounds <laughs> European. <laughs> that sounds European. I'm a castrato. Excuse, Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm a castrato. Uh, <laughs> I drink Perrier, not Pellegrino. <laughs> you mean Perrier? <laughs> so so yeah what would you spend your time doing learning working all the jobs jerking off that's a good one too. a lot of tugging it <laughs> yeah that was jose's own suggestion he was no i saw to... zach's moving right below me <laughs> giving me a bluey uh, i was giving him an air handsy <laughs> so you'd tug it a lot I I was like I'll fuck world. humans. Jose was like I'll fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> different folks. Yeah. Um, what else? Different strokes. Different strokes. Yep. It's a fast stroke. A slow stroke. Slow stroke. Javelin stroke. Chafee stroke. Ooh, the rugby. Damn, that's, <laughs> that's that's a sign of too much stroking. Been there. So, <laughs> anything else, Jose? Probably taking one and taking one of the sins, gluttony. Oh, just eat all the kinds of shit. You just become a fucking obese whale. <laughs> Why? You're not gonna die. You, you have a horrible idea of what you want to do. Like, I don't know. That just sounds horrible. That sounds like, like one worst. of the rings of hell. I'll like, say, I would work all menial jobs, never have sex, and be obese. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. That is it. That's it in a nutshell. That's what he said. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Those creature comforts. Endless mac and cheese. The sexless glutton. Sexless glutton that just works at like McDonald's and fucking Ross. Oh, I love it. That's the, that is the best answer thus far, Zach. Okay, that's great. Now I can't top that. What are you doing with your immortality? Um, Well, shit. Mine's gonna be so dry compared to Jose's crazy life. Um, so I was thinking I, I would, I would do it. Um, naturally I wouldn't want to because it just seems like life would be so long that you would eventually get just, there'd just be too much shit going on in your head. Imagine building, making friends and family over 3000 years. You'd just get used con- to losing many, people. Yeah. I guess you'd have to. Yeah. So, um, a lot of funerals. So, so I, I don't know. So part of me wouldn't want to do it, but. If I were to do it, what I think would be great is just keep a track of history. So, you know, travel from place to place, get stories from people, um, write down, (laughs) write down their history, what's going on in the world. Just keep a good track and save it 
somewhere that where it'll be accessible to people in the future. So, you know, cause there's so much mystery surrounding all, you know, history. I mean, we, there's so much shit we don't know. We, we were never there. We only know the way it was written by certain people. I mean, there's just not, there's not that much history when you think about it until recent. Yeah. Yeah. We're so young species. We're young. Yeah. And, um, I think it would just be great to keep a good record of, of all that stuff that goes on. That's awesome. You'd yeah. Be, uh, yeah. You'd be I'd the be keeper of time. A little historian, a little, yeah. A little <laughs> Herodotus. Or yeah. What, wait, what, Methuselah, who's that? I don't know. I don't know. Medusa? I don't know who Medusa was. All right. Well, Methuselah sounds like a Greek tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> All right. Sidebar, a little side question. If you could take one thing with you back to those 3,000 years to either, you know, save your ass or help you prosper. What is the one thing you would take with you? Game Boy Pocket with a copy of Pokemon Red version. All right. You're going to have fun looking at that with no batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Peps, what do you take with you? Oh, Zach's fuck, taking need... a paperweight. <laughs> and a 32-pack of Duracells. Play for four days. <laughs> I can bring a yo-yo with me then. A yo-yo, you guys are weird. <laughs> I was joking, all right. No, I would... you were wholly serious. No, what, what, what would you take? What else? Maybe like a some science book that tells me how to make a bunch of crazy shit and how to nice. you know survive. Survival book or something? I don't know. Something, science, may, yeah. something scientific. Something scientific that you could, yeah, or even just survival because you could you'd learn how to innovate a little bit on your own when you got fucking three thousand years. But yeah, like a survival book. How do I make a house? You know, I, or just maybe just an iPhone actually with YouTube on it, and Whoa. and uh, <laughs> and, the, uh, and a subscription. How to basics, <laughs> or yeah, What's how to basics and uh, primitive who's that? engineering. That one guy that <laughs> yeah. does like primitive engineering. That's yeah. all you need. Just a copy of those videos. And I think Peps are sticking with Yo-Yo, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yo-Yo. <laughs> He's like an endless supply of KY jelly. <laughs> For the jerkin, um, I would probably. <laughs> no, wait, is it? What would you take? Speak into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> what would you take? You would take a yo-yo. Take a yo-yo. Fuck. What else would I Anything take? Anything else? Um, to either protect or like help you prosper for the rest of the, your eternity. My fucking old Zune. <laughs> your old Microsoft Zune. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Better than taking an iPod. That's for sure. I would, <laughs> I would take, uh, I would take an almanac, almanac, uh, almanac. of big, uh, big almanac. Sure. yeah, the old almanac trick. So you know what? I've really? seen Back to the Future. I know what you should take back with you. <laughs> <laughs> Become rich. That's what I would do. What would you do though? Seriously. Nice I would wait up. until it becomes relevant. And then use it to become rich and famous and prosper. <laughs> just save it. Yeah, just hold on to it. That that'd be a bitch to protect for two thousand years. It's gonna decompose. A thousand years. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Um, no, okay. If I had to take something else with me, um, hmm, a case to protect that almanac, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> an almanac in a case, in a lamin- <laughs> laminated in the binder almanac. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. Probably a copy of Star Wars Episode One on VHS. Okay. That way to show people what the future of movies is. <laughs> Just by looking at the cover, though, I'll have to explain the rest of the movie. The cover, will, that'll get you through at least like a couple hundred centuries. <laughs> Just trying to explain that shit. Yeah. This is Jar Jar. <laughs> He's a problem. <laughs> All right. Biblical names. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on now. Moving on. It's the call. list. Dodged a bullet there. If you could quit your job and pursue your hobby full time with complete financial security, what would you do with that time? So you can quit your job. You don't got to worry about rent, bills, and you just have a you have a buffed up bank account, but you could just pursue your hobby every single day. Do what you want. Zach, what would you do? Um, I would, uh, write music. That would be my, that would be what I would be pursuing. Um, 
Just get, just do nothing but write music every chill around home, write chill, music. Chill, chill, write music, um, play video games. Just keep your mental like that's what that's what it would be for me if I was just around the house being able to play music. It's all about keeping my mental game in check and just keeping myself at peace. Cause I would I would be happy as a clam if that's all I could do every day. Just sit around and write music and not have to worry about work, just in my own cave, my comfort zone. Yeah. That's the shame about music. It's it's so hard to make it a living if it's yeah a passion. Just like video games too, even. Yeah. It's hard to make that a fucking moneymaker. Peps? I would probably uh, when I live the life of a streamer. Oh yeah, Playing you get big on Twitch. Yeah. Nice. Alright, what are we gonna call your show? Let's name it. Let's name it right now. Right on the spot? Fuck. Yeah, what's the name of uh Peps's uh Twitch show? Cam Girls. Cam Girls Gone Mild. <laughs> Cam Girls Gone Mild. <laughs> there we go. A shitty handle. It's a clickbait <laughs> handle. <laughs> All right, so dude, we, that's a great. We CGM, gotta start that, dude. It's gonna be the new uh, crossplay Twitch cam, series. <laughs> cam girls gone, gone mild. mild. You down, Peps? Gone Executive mild. producer credits. CGGM. Ooh, what's that? The abbreviation? Girls, yeah. We're all right. T-shirts are already being made. <laughs> so, a Twitch streamer. Yeah, basically. What's the end game? Just get a billion of followers, be a social influencer. Make all the shitty life decisions, yeah. And, you know, say some racist, racist remarks on the internet like PewDiePie. <laughs> <laughs> get, get in trouble for being racist. You know, the huge. Um, My answer is kind of along the same as Zach's. Uh, I would just... I'd build an epic recording studio and I would learn music production really well and I would write every day. I would produce myself, produce others, make money doing that. I, I would swing by. I'd let you come over. Bring, bring the larvae. Bring some ice over, um, some co- cold ones, you know. And I think we could just ride all day. We'll be rich. So, cool. <laughs> 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 Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this episode 12 of the Crossplay Podcast. Be sure to follow us over on Twitter at CrossplayPod. Also, read the blog over at WordPress.com slash Crossplay Entertainment. I have been Nikki James. I have been Zach. I have been Peppino. And at least two of us, maybe Peps if he wants to join. We'll see you next week for episode 13 of the Crossplay Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye. Bye. Adios. Adios.